Hi everybody, this is Father Bill, and this is like take eight. I'm at Commonwealth Lake Park. It's got to be the most difficult place to do a video. Because <laughs> of wind. Or air, or uh, leaf blowers. Or birds, or airplanes. I mean, a host of things. Am I frustrated? <laughs> well, anyhow, so I'm here today just to kind of remind us this weekend churches around the United States and dioceses around the United States are getting busy to um, promote life, particularly issues around abortion. Um, Marches for Life are beginning. Uh, I think actually on this very day in Washington, D.C., I believe there's a March for Life. Uh, but the question for us is, how are we as Catholic Christians promoting life and saying no to abortion? You know, abortion, which is killing tens of millions of children, and has killed tens of millions of children. It's a holocaust in our own modern day. Well, just by saying no is not enough, right? We need to be mindful of what is the reason, or what are the reasons why someone would choose something like this? How can we help them? How can we promote and let them know that there is life that they can choose and that may mean that we need to step up and accompany them. I know many grandparents have done just this, um, but also then to let them know that we love them, that it's heroic that they would keep their child. Um, but if it is the case that they are not really capable and uh, mature enough to actually raise the child, because a child has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? They have a right to parents, mom and a dad. The other option would be adoption. This is very heroic. It's as heroic as I can think of because for those women who have the child, they will grow to be affectionate and love this child as the child grows in their womb. And it's a big deal to then give that to another family. But again, it's heroic. In my two decades as a, as a pastor, I am, um, had a uh, staff member who before I hired her, she asked me um, some questions. She let me know of the fact that she had a child out of wedlock and that she gave that child into adoption and she wanted to know if it was okay, if she still wanted, if I wanted to hire her. I'm like, hey, yeah, definitely I do. That's a heroic thing you did. Um, absolutely, I would hire you. And I hope that you can promote uh, that option for other uh, women who you encounter as a minister of the church. To this day, she's still in contact with her daughter and she's now married and has her own child as well with her husband. And I'm just so proud of her. She did a heroic thing and she gave life to her daughter and a life that probably she couldn't have given herself at the age she had uh, her daughter. So this is amazing. Another way to promote life is to be involved in the activities around life. For the example, as I mentioned, to be part of Marches for Life that may be happening in our area. So these are things to also then pray about and pray that we'll create a culture of life where this will not even, the abortion will not even be something that will be thought of because that's just, it's like a non sequitur. This is one side of the, the life issue, we'll say. The other side of the life issue is at the end of life for our seniors. And often in our culture, especially here in Oregon, we call this death with dignity, but it, let's be clear, it is euthanasia, which is immoral. Um, and the struggle is we start as a culture, we have calculated someone's worth based on their productivity. Can they do things? Like as a senior, maybe they are not able to do things they used to be able to do. And therefore they become a burden. And that may be the same kind of situation that some people might think about when it comes to having a baby, that are, they're a burden. We need to have, as we hear in Romans 12, one, a, not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewal of our minds. And that mind would hopefully recognize the dignity of life from the beginning to the end. Cardinal Bernardine coined a phrase, the seamless garment. So we need to be consistent as Catholics. And this is interesting because there's a middle um, issue as well in the middle of life for those who have committed heinous crimes and they are now on death row and they are um, up to be killed by uh, capital punishment, which is a law of our land, but um, it's immoral. 
John Paul II made this clear, Benedict XVI repeated it, and Francis as well. The Catechism itself has been adapted and changed to reflect this evolution in our theology, coming to know really that the death penalty furthers violence. Violence has happened. Let's say someone murdered somebody. That's horrible. But then we commit violence again by killing the person. And I know that this is a struggle for those who uh, are families of the victims of this. This, I mean, I don't even know how hard that would be. That is to deal with there's a, being a, there's a perpetrator who has killed one of your loved ones. But revenge is not the way because then, then that's on us in our hearts. I have a friend who is a priest. He, uh, pardon the wind here. I have a, a priest who uh, uh, was serving in Pelican Bay, which is in, in the Northern California coastal area. Uh, and it's the state penitentiary for California. And there's some pretty hardened criminals there. He would then go and minister to whomever he could. And he was struck by the fact that the people that are in prison aren't the ones with the greatest shackles. That actually the guards are the ones who are imprisoned. They go home and there's all kinds of domestic violence and abuse and um, uh, addictions and all kinds of other issues that have kind of born out of their work and whatever they're doing. Um, that that kind of line of work is so difficult that that causes or is uh, kind of a catalyst for someone that struggles in their lives. Whereas in the prison, the prison population, he recognized that a lot of them were set free. That is, by incarceration, by having the opportunity to repent and to actually come to know Jesus, to encounter the living God, they were set free. They were changed into totally different people. Totally different people. And we are called to be people that are uh, loving and caring. And that is to give them the opportunity to be able to repent of whatever sins they've made or have done and to, again, partner with them. What do you think, Ezra? Ezra. That's my last dog's name. Snickers. There's Snickers, everybody. <laughs> okay, a little detour there. He's on my leg, so I wanted to make sure I pet it in there. So abortion, euthanasia, capital punishment, all of these, all of these are sins against the human person. And they're not pro-life, they're pro-death. We need to prevent this. And that goes even to bigger things. We as people will find ourselves uh, in our own churches divided by these things because we are political first. We have been partisan first and not Catholic first, not Christians first in this regard. We must listen to the teachings of Christ and his church and to think like that. Now, this may mean we need a conversion of heart. I get it. It's tough. I think probably the, the death penalty one is the more difficult one to rationalize uh, either way and to reason, I should say. But if you've seen what's happened to people when they have repented, hardened criminals now changed and reconciling, uh, it's amazing. Fourthly, would be other, envi other things like the environment. We are people of life and we want to create and help uh, sustain our, our earth, our world, so that our next generations can uh, be with us in a healthy space where uh, there's little pollution, uh, where we have sustainable energy. Uh, and how can we do that? Well, there's big things that can be done, but I just encourage you first with the small things, the ordinary, like recycling. I mean, we're pretty privileged to be in Beaverton where there's uh, good recycling programs. They come by, they'll pick up bottles, they'll pick up cardboard, um, they'll even pick up uh, yard waste. Uh, other cities, there's nothing, and all you can do is burn it or throw it away somehow. That, that's an easy way, simple way that we can be part of the other uh, issue of life. These are all, by the way, part of the seven teachings or seven issues of social Catholic teaching. And we, uh, and they all revolve, we all revolve around, they all revolve around life. Um, I want to encourage us this weekend, as you approach this weekend, to ponder on that. I may not be preaching, I haven't really figured out what I'm preaching about yet, uh, so I'm not sure I'll be talking about this issue per se, uh, but um, the video series, the Friday Reflection, gives me the opportunity to kind of talk about it with you. If you have any questions, of course, I always want to encourage you to come see me. Um, be mindful. I know people will land on different parts of these issues, but I'd be cautious. Why is it that we land on different parts as Catholics? Is this because we're partisan? 
uh, I would propose we might be. And we need to be able to get along and work together on all of these issues. And they can be all worked on at the same time. We don't have to, it's not a zero-sum game. If we work on one, we can't work on the other. That means everybody has their gifts. They may like a particular area more than another, or they seem drawn to another or called to another area. Then God bless them. Uh, where other people are called to, you know, separate issues uh, around life. And we need to make sure that we lift each other up, not call each other names or bash each other. Because that's not pro-life, is it? No, it's not. So, think on these things, and I look forward to seeing you. If, again, if you have questions, I'd be happy to enter into dialogue with you and chat about them. Uh, and again, this is Friday Reflection. I'm Father Bill from Holy Trinity Parish in Beaverton. God bless you, and I hope to see you this weekend. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, this is Father Bill, and this is the Friday Reflection, and I'm here with Snickers, who's going to give me some problems, I think. Uh, chill out, dog. Yeah, he's going to do it already. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Okay, now I have ducks to deal with. <laughs> Love ducks. Uh, my dog, uh, Snickers, who's with me, not so much happy about ducks. Oh my gosh, I got through the whole thing. It took eight takes. Praise the Lord, whew. Right there, Snickers, what do you think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Whew.